a son cries, they lie. Doesn't give you what, what he wants. Um, and so we have to understand this probably best calm chaos so that you're more likely to get what you want. Hi everyone, I'm Gabby Kusters, head of Google Marketing and Events at SMR, and we're here at our Chicago event, Art Insights of Innovation, with two steam guests, two of which um, actually had the chance to give a workshop yesterday. So I have Dave Lindahl, Insights Now Inc., and Mimi Sherlock, she is from IFF Nourish. Welcome. Thank you. Before I start, I always got to ask my guests to introduce themselves and tell them, uh, tell the audience about your companies and what you do. I think it's nice to kick off that way. Sure. For me. Yes, yeah, sure. I'm uh, Lady Shot, and I am the lead for consumer intelligence at IFF Nourish. And Nourish um, really is uh, covering food and beverage. So I lead a global intelligence group for the CB coverage group, and I'm absolutely such leading ingredient company. So we supply all types of ingredients, flavors, and other ingredients uh, to consumer product companies. Nice, nice. Yeah. So uh, Dave Lundahl, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Insights Now. And Insights Now Help is a marketing research and consultancy. Mm -hmm. We work in consumer cash groups, in product innovation and renovation and bring insights to help companies make better decisions and apply uh, the evil frameworks to really understand why people do what they do. Interesting. Now, before we start talking about the workshop that you did yesterday and the content that you covered, how did you get together? How did IFF and Insights Now decide to work together? What was the purpose of this smart thing? I mean, maybe we were asking that for quite a few years now. Um, I originally, I think, tapped into Insights Now uh, many years ago, just because they have some really unique behavioral methodologies. Mm -hmm. And at IFF, we um, were really interested, especially in associating people, not just consumers, and just to behavior, mm -hmm. uh, and then the consumer. And uh, this I found has had over the years some really uh, great methodologies and design um, that's just kind of uh, I think we were able to connect on a few great opportunities and work together. And um, we were on the other side. Uh, yeah, uh, me is the lead thinker in the industry. And mm -hmm. because of that, because of generative AI is such an important topic today, mm -hmm. uh, I reached out to Nini because we were working in this area. And I knew that she must be uh, also, as her team is, is exploring this. And so we had, uh, you know, uh, decided that this was one of the most important areas to focus a lot of our effort right now. Interesting. Yeah. So, so this whole area of this concept for creating, yeah. using generative AI is one outflow from all of our collaborations, which really excited about okay it's a lot of compliments coming from both of you you say when i see that okay yesterday you gave the workshop you talked to the delegation about how to co-create concepts using generative ai what does that mean what did you cover in the workshop yeah well we covered uh, kind of the this whole process from capturing unique and involved insights uh, being able to use those insights to feed into general AI. Mm -hmm. uh, we spent the bulk of our time really pumping people to understand how many you really think of the most about a general AI. Yeah. Um, and doing that through a prompting sequence where you can um, be suspicious and super effective at layering your proprietary insights on top of insights that through the AI can be raised and fans. Um, and deal with the general AI race, um, and how to kind of grew that together, create an option sequence that really uh, gets you where you want in terms of using insects to develop new fast after years. Okay. Uh, and then we talked about what do you do after that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you use that? You do really have a list. So you can use it in how they issue with our health traditional co creation sessions. 
the fact that kids in a row who are, who are virtually, uh, we talked about kind of the, the flexibility with it there. Uh, but then led to high concepts to your recent about my screen and how they tell us to use some different methodologies. So that was really the, the crux of what we got in our, in our workshop. Right. And the core of the, I think that is most interesting for the people is how you people of the way gender AI in Bob and the sort of the art of the cross. How can you really utilize that in a way to, uh, integrate, you know, the learnings from research. So you have a basis, you can feed the generative AI so that it, and then, it, and then, uh, look for ways in which, and in, in the file step process, how can you actually create these mm -hmm. robust, highly targeted with the basis of, uh, basis of insights, uh, concepts. Mm -hmm. that you can take right to consumers to further that. So it's really exciting how um, the, the, the problem we're trying to solve here is that today research teams and issue teams in particular are have a lot of constraints. You know, constraints in their time, yeah. constraints in budgets, uh, and constraints in in terms of history, human resources, mm -hmm. bring these together mm -hmm. to do innovation, you know, to, to understand concepts. So what this does is it, it, it gives, provides an order of magnitude in an um, capacity create. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, by utilizing generative AI. Mm -hmm. And that really helps companies solve these problems so they can much more effectively and efficiently innovate um, at, you know, to come up with concepts to, to get for the process. That's very interesting. Now I imagine that it's not all positive. I'm, I'm sure that with innovation, like we just saw on the stage earlier today, the first speaker came up, there's also some constraints and challenges. So what are some of the challenges that gender AI um, um, help overcome when we're looking into concept for creation? Mm -hmm. what, what can, can you talk about that? In terms of the challenges with AI, yes. Oh, uh, well, you know, everyone talks about really the same types of challenges, right? And, uh, and that is that sometimes AI doesn't give you what, what you want. Um, and so we have to understand how you best comes, you know, I just didn't hear why they can't reach the last. And I was really being more when they're um, understanding that I didn't know AI seems like there's another healing kind of talking right back to you as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's super important in the context that you see this. Um, and then also I think the these challenges are with really just making sure that we use this concept of human and old. And now is that, you know, the human is really driving the craft easy. Um, and so if you're ready to get what um, they have control over that. And so I'm uh, sort of taking in that mindset mm -hmm. of, you know, you're in control here and you need to direct uh, the AI, you know, in, in the best way. Then also the responsibility to look for things that, you know, if you feel call hallucinations, right? Trying to maybe with AI is making things up or uh, uh, coming back to you with things that feel like very not. Um, being very intrusive or even send some bias there. Um, you know, it's a human, you're in charge and it's your responsibility to look for some of those things, be aware that that can happen. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, video ask the AI before you like. And so I think just making sure that people are aware of the limitations of the AI mm -hmm. is super important. Kind of making sure people understand their role as the human. In this iterative loop with AI, AI is like a creative partner. This, this, it's not a human, and it does make mistakes. Yeah, so the human has to be responsible there. Yeah. I'll add to that is because of AI, and we need to direct it. We need to teach it through smartphone sequences. We came up with a five-step process to be effective and to avoid some of the pitfalls that that you can have mm -hmm. when you're 
utilize a tool that generates AI. And then this this process is very hard. Okay. It's it and it's you know you either use yourself no yeah, the first one yeah first step is just to introduce yourself to your AI AI creative partner okay and they're not <laughs> yeah yes and then you go from the second yeah step. so you know, the first step what we recommend is to kind of do this check where you give some context to the AI to literally use and we use Bob Cohen okay and on his site and basically you're just telling it who you are. And that your challenge is and kind of giving it the overview of what you're trying to accomplish and, and why. And not even asking it for anything else, or not even asking it to come back to us all day, mm-hmm. but just through um, giving that angel life to um, give it that and seeing what it comes back to you with. Because it's through him acting something, and you know, every time you feed it with something, it comes back to something. <laughs> Um, then that's the first check to make sure whatever comes back to you with makes sense. Mm-hmm. And if we have an understanding of your challenge in the interdial in way. So, you know, if I say hi, you know, I'm an uh, insect professional working in the baby space, which we were doing for this um, chick study, and I'm um, looking to um, come up with new ready to eat products. In, uh, in the Bay Area for, um, you know, uh, the U.S. for the Euro, right? And give it a little bit more contest. Um, it'll come back to say, wow, that's a really cool thing that you're doing right now. It's always answer it. So I know, like, it's even an easily to make a positive and friendly way. And it's just by doing that first step, before you even get managed to the detail of what we want to generate for you. Okay. You're doing a first check and you're giving it um, some kind of context that's going to help you along the way. Right? So that's the very first step to recognize. In the side step, usually that's when we start asking it and there is specifically for what we wanted to generate for us. I'm going to start feeding it some of our A sites to guide the way that it's the right ideas for us. Uh, in the third step, what we like to do is kind of stretch it a little bit more, just like you would in a ideation with uh, with a uh, regular team default. And that's to take what is some of stretch the thinking even more, um, getting beyond some of those, uh, that, you know, first idea that comes out with. And in a lot of what we do is we introduce the free as the deliberate creative thing tool. And we basically ask the zero of the AI. Um, to generate any more additional ideas mm-hmm. uh, using a specific creative tool. And that's a creative tool that we've chosen because that creative tool really uh, fits kind of the genre of our, uh, of our needs. Um, and so we, we had it kind of tearing new more ideas and you know, pushing it in, in those ways. Then for us in our fourth step, what we do is we ask it to bring some of those ideas to life. We take a look at all those ideas it's given us. And we say, hey, let's start bringing these to life. What would they look like as uh, uh, a new um, branded um, product on the shelf? Okay. Then I raised this. Uh, the large case study, what we do is we may have a fictitious brand. Um, and we, we ask it to generate uh, the concepts of um, using this fictitious brand for these new ideas. And then our final step, uh, we chose some of the um, you know, ideas in regretful life. And we, Asked it to illustrate that, you uh, know, with uh, an image. Sure. And, you know, the telling we've got to that fifth step is got some great context. So, and a lot of times people talk about, uh, I mean, tissues with the images that are created with, with dirt of the eyes. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, once you have been feeding it all this context and they have an iteration, many times for us, we find it's when we asked it to develop an image. Um, We've been sort of pretty model there. It's given us the very good images. And if it doesn't, we just tell it how to take it. But um, we have some pretty good luck using this five strip process and giving it images that are pretty usable and pretty amazing mm-hmm. um, by the end of the five steps. Yeah, so, well, man, in the second and third step, I think are really for second steps where you're feeding an insects mm-hmm. based on prior research. Yeah. And, and, and so they, and the, the model used in this case setting, which is looking at a, this 
and in trying to find some where are some of the biggest opportunities and big goods is we 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 did something we looked at in one of the people's lives where they're using baked goods mm-hmm. and uh, we looked at the context around you know when uh people are consuming baked goods for this uh, yeah. and then we, we looked at the in those moments what are the products they're currently using and finally what are the types of uh in those moments what are the gaps between what people are aspiring to mm-hmm. uh versus what they're actually getting from the products they use and this is one this landscape uh we're the analysis allows you to really pinpoint the biggest opportunities. It's where people uh, have these big gaps, but yet they're in those moments a lot mm-hmm. when it's relevant for, let's say, big good in this team. And then in, in the third step, and this is a technique that uh, uh, Ray Plumpton um, just uh, is been highlighting tomorrow in his near MR. Um, that he puts out um, every uh, every week, or, and uh, in which he picked up on, we're utilizing this tool called Samper. Okay, and it's a way to take an idea. You, you took little Dennis as a kind of banana case, like a marble. Yeah, it was a cupcake. How could you create many twists of that? So they riff off the little. So t- everyone knows the little that is it fits really well at the moment that we're looking at, like uh, this, like an evening indulgent type of moment. Um, and people so eating little daddies, you know. But how can you take little daddies and create many twists? And so Scander is a tool that has been around for a long time that people are creatives or people in facilitating yes. these types of sessions for co-creation use. And so we had a uh, meeting was able to train Chatter AI of what Scatter is. And now we just say you scatter and us. No. And it was able to create not just one you know, but many, many, many different yeah, iterations and concepts that you could then form the consumers. So it's really powerful because the things that you would do in a traditional aggregation session, a creation session, you know, many times you have to stretch people's thinking. Um, and you can do the same with turn of AI, um, to empower it, uh, generate even more additional ideas in the direction that you want. So again, you're the human in control. Yeah. You choose the tool, you use your actors, uh, then see what it comes back, then see how well it works. And if it's not with you, you know, change the direction, tweak, it, tweak your prompt a little bit more. Um, and it's really, anyway, and it is possible. Yeah. Uh, you just have to know how to tell it what to do. That's very impressive. But again, with this five steps, what you mentioned about hallucinations, we have to keep checking throughout. Yes. So at the end, you do have, like you said, a trained product that does deliver interesting and useful um, even images, because I know what right. all the the comments that we get from yeah AI generated images. So that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to the case study because I know that you, you gave the workshop yesterday, but the case study is really the essence of the, this partnership between you two. So, what were the findings? Can you talk about it, or is it confidential? We can talk a little bit about it and even in general, Alton. Um, you know, so uh, I obviously was a client in this situation, yeah. and um, I work for an ready company, and we serve uh, the bakery category and many, many consumers of the bakery category. Mm-hmm. And so we were looking to figure out how do you innovate in this category, because it's pretty, you know, it's not, around, it's not a new category. It's been around for a long time, but a lot of the foot products, uh, it's pretty sophisticated. And so we really needed to find some way to figure out, you know, where the animation could be. And this moment's landscape um, really, you know, obviously car vibes is a, a great tool. And through that, we had so many different insights. Um, this Steve has it already kind of the, I was saying the first layer of insight is just, no, I thought these moments of opportunity. You know, what are the moments? And what really is this stuff? What are people doing in these moments? How are they feeling? How do they want to feel? Um, you know, 
what hell are they? Is it, you know, are they alone? Are they for their people? These phones. So really, insights from around understanding these moments and really, again, it's all about bridging the end of the gap with the consumer and you being able to it. Into it. Okay, I get it. These the understand what people want in these moments of where we're at and what's happening. And then, really, the next flavor is like really doubt was driving into. Well, then put our leaders in it. And you what's worrying about that? What's not working about that? And today, in just tons of data points around, okay, now that we're used to that moment, now we've had data points to guide the innovation in that moment. Mm -hmm. How should we teach um, the the concepts that are already out there and available um, to fulfill these That's aspirational gaps that people have? Um, and so, you know, I don't even know how many messages, but once we understand the opportunity, um, we need to ask questions about, by uh, you know, the motor haters of that opportunity, you know, uh, just the, the context around that opportunity, and then try it into where the really hats. Um, is it that you want the things that are, you wish these things were a little healthier, you know, you wish these things have pressure in Vegas, you wish these things. Um, you know, and add um, more natural mm -hmm. um, elements to them. So those are the kind of things that was the rates, but we were able to. We, uh, yeah. as, as a research supplier in the industry, as a consultancy, uh, we, we do this set of lenity all the time. It's, it's a, this was a 20 minute survey. Okay. A very subtle to, to feel. But with the right questions in this in this way, so you really would generate the strictures of information. Manuals to about three thousand um, people that uh, were working in it. That they use data in various ways, but these very high percent of people in this U.S. based. Uh, and uh, so that's that's the methodology. It's it's a it's a straightforward methodology, but you have to understand what are you know, the framework mm -hmm. and what are the right questions to to this framework that realizing that moments of people's experience is the context by which they behave, is the context by which they feel, is the context by which they um, had experiences, and it's the same context by which they have aspirations. Maybe somehow have a better life. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and it's a it's a really neat methodology as well. And um they they bring it into sort of follow that to that people are are really in the moment when they're talking in our face says that they have absolutely part of it. So it's very, very insightful. So what's next? Where do we go from here? Ooh. What's in the future for for this very amazing partnership. It seems you work very well together. So you have it is your best. And I'm full from this study bound. You know, we're gleaning a lot of things. We have to make all have and create a project plus. All with our innovation teams that will work on the categories. You know, we have designers and you know, business scientists and three of us. And we'll just gather to really use concepts to life and in any real products. And so really are that stage for this particular piece study is that is to do some validation, screen and validation with, with consumers. Um, so they also just kind of they needed that steps. But yeah, if it means that the kind of take our our learning or our our uh hello uh corporation and thinking all this, uh just keep going forward with what else we can do. Yeah, and absolutely. Today we had a lot of really big farms in the world that human energy is going to be needed to solve, to overcome these challenges. I'm concerned that the off and the resource constraints for innovating is causing companies to become much more incremental. And and causing companies to uh, not be bold enough to solve these problems that we have. Oh, you? If you look at the issues we have around uh, sustainability, you know, people want a cleaner. Yeah, they want a healthier life. You know, they they want a happier life. 
uh, and sustainability issues in the world uh, over the planet. She used one example, how you innovate, you know, to impact that. And if you cannot innovate in ways that you're going to create a healthier, happier um, life for people, no. uh, people aren't going to buy those products. And therefore, the innovations, say, on generative, um, regenerative agriculture, if you know, food product, you know, we do lines saying uh, precision fermentation to create proteins that are, you know, just like cheese, you know, or whatever it would be that you want about, whatever, whatever <laughs> the cases may be, uh, those technologies, if, if it's not that impact evil, if that people are not accepted, then you have to create innovations that will have the impact to solve the big problems in the world. So, so um, I think this generative AI and the techniques that we're working on together do one step for us task. And uh, that's really exciting. Like I said, it's extremely impressive how about you, what they're doing. And you spoke the truth. It's last week we had a client summit and we exactly spoke about that. Consumers are getting more astute. They want to know where their foods come from, yeah. the, their products are coming from. It's not just enough to present them with a beautiful packaging. Mm -hmm. There it needs to be a trail of you know, sustainability behind it, you know, and transparency ethics behind it. It's not just a shiny little thing that you put on their table. Right. So right. indeed. Indeed. Yeah. I think trust, right? It's, yes. Uh, that what how yes. trust is working these days is has changed. And we need to be more transparent. We need to be clear. We need to show, you know, the, the proof and, and the data. And the automatic team will feel all filled it and I will trust, trust our hearts and trust our brains. Yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. They're both amazing. It was an absolute pleasure speaking to the two of you. Um, I do think that the workshop that you gave yesterday should be watched by all of the hosts that are online um, because it is really insightful to see what you're doing together. And it's such a healthy and um, nice combination um, between the two brands, that the two companies that you have. So thank you very much thank for you. having this chat with me today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you for this opportunity. Of course. No, it was a pleasure. My absolute pleasure.